Hi everybody. I had a plan for this video and it was very intricate and it was very artistic and what ended up happening was I just kept on reading and reading what I wrote and I felt it was just going to distract from what I wanted to actually say. So instead of doing that, you know, poetic, cinematic kind of little project, I just want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. And I, you know what, I hear this a lot when people make videos like this because I think everybody wants to make it a big deal and make something that they can really artistically be proud of, but when it comes down to it, you just have to speak and you just have to talk about it because that is what is important. You need to be heard, not to be shown. So I've been thinking a lot the past year or so about how I present myself, mostly how I feel comfortable presenting myself and what makes me feel like me. I observed my friends for a while and I couldn't understand why I felt different from them. Why were they so comfortable with facial hair? Why wasn't I? Why do I hate seeing myself in clothes like that but I like the way they look on those people. Why Why is that? Why is there a line there? I figured for a long time I was just uncomfortable with masculinity, but that's not the case. I've come to understand that I am transgender. I've come to understand that I've always been uncomfortable with my maleness, not my masculinity. And now that I see it that way, the rest of my life makes so much sense. My childhood makes more sense, my aspirations, everything makes way more sense, and I've never been more peaceful <laughs> inside of my head because I always used to be thinking about, you know, what wasn't matching and what wasn't lining up, and I didn't see it that way. I didn't see it as matching or lining up. I just saw it as I'm confused and I don't know what I want. And now I know exactly what I want and I have a goal and everything is so clear and it's, I don't know how to explain it because I feel like people that are not trans maybe don't have this confusion that I had. And it's like, I didn't know myself before this. And I, I mean, I'm still the same person. I still like the same things. I'm still a huge nerd. But now when I look in the mirror, even though I haven't started HRT, even though I have had no surgeries, like everything, I still feel like I see myself now because I'm acknowledging it. I'm acknowledging who I am and I'm sharing it with other people too. I remember as a kid enjoying two specific Disney movies because I was raised by a Disney fanatic, my mother, The Little Mermaid and Mulan. And now that I'm older and I've read lots of articles and talked to lots of trans people, I've heard from a lot of them that these two movies were also their favorite, and it makes a lot of sense. It really is very clear why. Back then, I always loved the way they looked, and I thought the art was really cool, and I just thought the music... I loved everything about the movies, but there was definitely a deeper subconscious reason why those movies were so important to my development as a person. Mulan is fairly easy to understand. Even though it's not about a trans experience, it still it plays with gender, and it shows that that person can transform into something to fit the way that they have to feel. I don't... that's kind of a strange, vague description, and again, it's not about a trans experience, of course, but it still resonates with people that maybe are uncomfortable with the way they look and the way that they're expected to behave as a girl or as a boy when they're assigned that way at birth. The Little Mermaid, however, is a little bit more abstract and I think it lines up a lot more with the minds and dysphoria of trans kids. The Little Mermaid fought tooth and nail to become who she knew she was meant to be. She always knew she wanted legs and everyone around her told her no but she did not stop, she kept going, she found a way to do it herself, and even though she lost so much in the process, in the end, what she gained back really was everything she lost, first of all, but it was also everything that she wanted, and she was finally comfortable, she was finally able to do the things she wanted to do, she was finally able to express herself as a human instead of as a mermaid. So, if we're gonna contrast this a little bit, what I'm going to do, and what a lot of trans people do, is they fight tooth and nail to become who they know they're supposed to be on the outside. We're already those people inside. Already. Just like Ariel already, you know, was in love with Prince Eric or whatever. And trans people are not doing this for the love of somebody that they're attracted to. Obviously. This is about the love from ourselves. We're trying to become something physically that lines up with our love for ourselves. If that makes sense. I hope it does. And the process is extremely difficult and in many places very expensive, and in most places dangerous just to exist as a trans person. The murder rate for trans women, and especially black trans women, is astronomical and just horrifying. I've known for a while now that this is who I am, and I've been taking strides to make my exterior match my interior. I will not tell you that I feel like a boy trapped in a girl body, because this is my body. This is my girl body. So it's not true to say that about myself and about most trans people. That's just not true. And it's a very old-fashioned way of looking at it. Like it's an illness that needs to be fixed by transforming your exterior. It's not an illness. It's a reality. It's who we are as people. And saying we need to be fixed by transforming our body into the ideal feminine, you know, traditionally 
It's, it's just not what it's about. It's not. It's about being comfortable in our bodies. So say it with me. Well, maybe not because this may not apply to you, but listen. This is my girl body. When it has breasts on it, it will still be my girl body. It's not going to be a different body. I'm not switching bodies. I'm not trapped. I am more free than I have ever been in my life. I know there is a long way for me to go, but I am not trapped. The cage is unlocked and the door is open and all I have to do now is just, just walk until I find where I'm supposed to be. I feel freer than I have ever felt. I don't know if freer is a word, but it's fine. I appreciate the support I've gotten on other social media sites so much. A lot of my friends have come forward and just been so supportive and so loving. And the people that I'm directly around every day, the people at work, ALB, my roommate, everybody is just so good. And at first there was a bumpy spot with some of the people that were very close to me, but they were afraid of what it meant for me and my safety. And when they came to understand that I am <laughs> very cautious and very careful and that they just have to trust me to do my best. That also was perfect and it's great. I hope you all understand that I read every single comment. I literally go through my email and I read every single comment <laughs> that you guys leave on every video and they all mean the world. I may not have time to respond to all of you but I do read everything and I internalize it. Not the bad stuff. I don't internalize the bad stuff. A big part of what's made me able to understand myself this way and to come forward is because of the love that you've shown me. And that sounds strange to some people because it's online and it's not something that I can physically receive or physically enable, but my life has improved so much since I started YouTube. Like what, seven months ago? Seven months, I think, if not less. Eight months. Is it August? Oh God. I can't picture myself now without all of you to talk to and to come to with my feelings and my rants on, you know, social issues and even just sharing my love for beauty. It's it's such an outlet and it's so warm and it's something that I look forward to constantly and it's something that's always in my mind. I've changed so much internally in the past year and I have loved sharing it with you. You have no idea. Because I'm sure some of you are now curious, especially people that are new to this video or this channel, you can see and this is important for you to understand, not every trans person is going to be willing to show you how they used to present. Most of us will not do it. We refuse because it's not who we are anymore. It's not us. So what I'm about to show you is not who I am. I don't want to hear that I was so handsome as a boy because that feels awful to hear because I'm not a boy. So don't say that, please. I just want to satisfy your curiosity before you start asking, okay? So, and, and just never ask a trans person for this kind of picture or photo or video or anything. Don't ask a trans person how they used to look because it's not important, okay? I used to present like this and if you know me or if you watch my videos, look at my eyes. Do you see how dead they look? It's, it's not like I was depressed. I wasn't, and a lot of us are, mind you, a lot of us are very depressed, but I didn't know what was happening back then. I just thought, you know, I'm gonna try having a beard and lowering my voice because that's what I'm supposed to do. And I don't look happy at all. And it's not that I wasn't happy, but now I am way happier and I'm way more content with who I am and I feel so much more alive and and in sync with my mind. And it's, it's like an awakening. It's like an ascension. It's bizarre. It's such a weird thing to explain, that feeling. I don't feel trapped now, but I felt trapped then. And I didn't realize it, this is all in hindsight, but feeling like I had to put on the beard and the deep voice just to go to work and just to feel safe, that is a cage. That is, I can't, I can't let myself go back to that. And a lot of people have to, a lot of people have to, you know, revert to their assigned gender just to feel safe and to go day-to-day -day lives. And I'm, I'm fortunate that I do feel safe in the place that I live and the place that I work to express and to present my gender identity the way that it is true. But so many other people don't have that privilege and it's important, so important, and please listen. If somebody tells you that they're trans and that they have always felt like a girl and that they are a girl, even if they have to grow a beard, even if they have to wear dress shirts and suits every day, they're still a girl, okay? And it's important for you not to dismiss that or to think that they're faking it just because they cannot pre present themselves every day of the year. It's, it's, it's dangerous. There are so many murders, again, especially of black trans women, especially in the United States of America. It's like, I, I don't even know the numbers, but I know it's 
way too high. I know it's astronomically higher than cisgendered people being murdered by people. It's, it's, whew. If you know a trans person and they have felt comfortable enough to come out to you or to explain how they feel to you, always listen to them. Know that you are very important to them if they have not already expressed it to a large group of people. There is so much faith in people that we have to have and it's hard to have it when you are one of the most marginalized groups on the planet. And of course, there are so many intersectional privileges that go with this. I have a reasonable amount of privilege as a white person, as a passing person, so it's important that we show the same respect to people that don't have my privileges. Please, please. If you are trans or you're questioning your gender identity, I want you to know, and please hear me, there are so many others like you out there. And I hope that as soon as you feel safe enough to do so, you begin sharing yourself, your true self, with the world. Because while there is so much hatred out there, there's also way more support and acceptance and love. And while everybody may not <laughs> understand how to talk at first, if their heart is in the right place, they will listen and they will learn from you. And it's so much easier to do this with friends and support. And if you don't have those right now, you will eventually. You just have to keep on moving. And this is different for everybody, but you will find it. I know you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it in one way or another. It's gonna be different. Of course, it's gonna be different. Everybody has a different experience. My experience is not universal, but it will work out for you. You just have to keep on going. I love you all, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm sorry that this video was not as chipper or as funny as my normal ones are, but this is a very important topic and I don't want to water it down, so thank you. I also just need to mention briefly before I go that I am doing a collaboration in real life <laughs> with a uh, Toronto store. Um, it's the Shoppers Drug Mart Beauty Boutique at Bloor and Runnymede. There is an Instagram for this page, for this store. It's at SDM989, so if you can follow them on Instagram if you're interested in my beauty things, my beauty videos and everything like that, I would really appreciate it because it's going to be tutorials and giveaways up there all the time. Just follow them and that'll be great. It's time for me to go, but I'll see you again next week and again, thank you so much. You mean the world to me and I know I can count on your support. <laughs> Bye.